Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. I'm Jeff Snyder. This is BRNAM for Tuesday, January 4th, 2022. And our top stories today, decarbonizing real estate and buying real estate in the metaverse. And joining me now to discuss this and a lot more is Deidre Willard. She's a, well, how do you say it? A real estate pundit with the Motley Fool. I think that's a good way to say it. Deidre, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us and happy new year to you and your family. Happy new year. I'm excited for this one. Yeah, this is exciting. So let's, we're going to talk a little bit environmental and then we're going to talk technology. Let's start with environmental. Decarbonizing real estate, the decarbonization of real estate. Let's first define what this means. What are we talking about? We're we talking about removing the carbon from the steel are we talking about something a little bit more higher level than that? We're really talking about all of the ways that real estate impacts the environment. And so with decarbonization, we're trying to get to net zero, which means that we're not adding to the problem in real estate. And, and as we all know from our houses and everything else, real estate uses up a lot of energy in the, in the development of land, certainly, but in, you know, in heating, cooling, lighting, all sorts of things like that. So there's really a, a, an awareness now of how much energy real estate takes and, and the ways that we can maybe change that a little bit. And, and to your point, I did a little research before our show, Deloitte Consulting, a well-known consulting firm, I think estimated that 40% of carbon emissions come from real estate. I mean, that's, mm -hmm. that's pretty significant. And to your point, the construction, the materials, the operation. I mean, they're using uh, lights, electricity. Um, now, to be fair, and you would know this better than I, Deidre, a lot of these buildings have moved towards a more uh, greener, or a greener, friendlier, uh, environmentally friendlier uh, methodology, but still there's a ways to go here. There's a long ways to go because older buildings weren't really designed to conserve energy in any way. So even if you're adding in things like you're switching to solar power or something like that, you've still got problems with insulation. You've still got even things like the way that a building is positioned so so that it maybe is getting uh a lot of light and a lot of buildings, you know, we've seen that they have the massive curtain wall and these big, big windows, which is beautiful, but it also is an energy concern. Absolutely. And again, uh, it's about moving in this direction. I think recently we, we've talked to our various ESG personalities, uh, our contributors about uh, COP26, which is a very well-known um, uh, environmental sustainable conference. And to your point, it's about getting globally to this uh, net zero emissions in order to reduce, I guess, the temperature, the carbon raises the temperature. I'm not a scientist by any stretch of the imagination, but more and more investors, and this is what I want to hit on in terms of real estate investors, more and more investors have an ESG tilt to their investing mandates now. Absolutely. It's important for companies. You'll see in a lot of uh, investor reports, you'll see an, an ESG report or things like that. There are also different ESG ETFs you can invest in. Bad side with that is there's concerns about greenwashing, which is the idea that people are trying to, you know, sort of inflate what they're doing in order to get investors more interested. So you have to do your homework a little bit. But overall, I think this is great news because it's really an important thing. Real estate is tremendously wasteful. There's so much that can be done, even with construction and construction waste. We're getting better and better about that. But time is really of the essence when we're talking about making these big systemic changes. So for our real estate investors out there, whether they're institutional or individual, just in your perspective, in your mind, what do people need to be thinking about when they're looking at real estate? I guess it could be residential and also commercial. What are things you need to be thinking about? Are there certain certifications? You mentioned greenwashing. I agree. It's hard to really, you have to really dig and dig and pull back the onion. And by the way, Deidre, there's not a lot of good standardization when it comes to a lot of this data. 
There isn't. And there's some concerns that some of the data isn't entirely accurate. Bloomberg did a really great story on uh, some of the ratings recently and whether or not they can, how, how ratings are used, what constitutes a positive shift toward becoming more green. It really varies. There's no there's no firm standards, and so uh, it, it's it's a little easy to play with what constitutes being an ESG uh, focused company. So, Didra, I mean, is this a achievable goal in five years, ten years, or is this are we looking? Uh, geez, by the time I retire, or maybe by the time I'm dead, uh, which hopefully is a long time from now, are we? Wh- when are we going to achieve, or what is the objective in achieving these net zero emission uh, goals? It's not really a question of a goal because it's it's a kind of it's almost like a goal you can not ever reach. So we're really just looking for changes along the way, incremental changes. I would say that that certain cities have uh, different rules for trying to get to net zero or have a, a percentage of buildings having uh, you know being net zero within five to ten years. That's that's certainly a great goal. We're seeing more and more shift towards alternative forms of power, but we also have to make sure that uh, you know. Really, it's, it also comes down to the ways that the buildings are being constructed as, as well. So it's really two, two facets when, you, when it comes to real estate. Well, whatever, whatever the timeline or non-timeline is, we know that real estate investors are focused on this and they have a greater tilt towards sustainability and ESG. Deidre, I need to take a quick break. And, and again, we don't ever do these topics enough justice, but I think we get a lot out there, get the conversation going. When we come back, we'll talk to Deidre about, but I'm laughing, but it's really not funny, buying real estate in the metaverse. I think you're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses. I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Are you over 50? Would you like to get up to 33% more income in retirement? Then call now for this free book, Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers. This free book reveals little known secrets about annuity strategies that will help you make the right choices before buying an annuity. Call right now for your free book. And as a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report, both absolutely free for calling Annuity General today. Call 800-504-8194. Welcome back. We're talking this morning to Deidre Willard. She's a real estate pundit and I would say real estate know-it-all for The Motley Fool. And I mean that in a positive way, Deidre. Thanks so much for staying with us this morning. Thank you. All right. A lot has been made. A lot of hay has been made or whatever the acronym you want to use or analogy, I guess, uh, about the transition of Facebook to Meta. And now we're focused on the metaverse, which I guess is like the internet on steroids. It's not really the internet. It's more than the internet, but it's basically a a virtual world. And I want to ask you, uh, it seems that investors now, real estate investors, are trying to buy real estate in the metaverse. And I I needed to get your feedback on this. 
Yeah, it's fascinating. We've seen a couple of multi-million dollar deals in two of the different metaverses, uh, one of them in Sandbox and one of them in Decentraland. And this is becoming a really hot topic. Obviously, crypto and NFTs and all of that have been, you know, dominating the news last year. But really, this is kind of there's a land grab going on in the different metaverses because what they're doing is they're grabbing up land so that it can be developed in the metaverse and then it can be rented out, it can be used for events, it can be resold just like real real estate, except it's in this virtual world or really multiple virtual worlds. But but how do they value? I know how they value real estate and it's usually direct real estate is done on a quarterly basis and they they true up the numbers and yada 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 and, and, and you know there are lots of managers out there that do this. But I guess how is it valued? And, and, and it just seems a little counterintuitive to me. I guess I don't understand who's living, who's living in the apartment building that I develop in the metaverse. Well, it's not so much residential. What it really is, is retail. So some big companies, uh, Gucci, for example, uh, Ralph Lauren, they've been doing uh, different projects inside Roblox and and inside that world. And that's just kind of the start of this. So really what a lot of these companies are doing is they, they are creating retail real estate in the metaverse because they want to lease this out. They think that, that different companies will want to own this space or lease this space, come and get people to come in and shop and buy things because this is really about how do you make money off of this real estate? And, and most of that is by selling things within the metaverse. So within the metaverse, let's just say I have a niece and nephew. One, my niece is nine. My nephew is five. They play video games. I guess theoretically they're playing video games in a metaverse, in a universe of somehow. And, you know, Call of Duty and some of these uh, Age of Warcraft and other things that I, I really haven't played a video game since the Atari 2600. But you, there's a world there. And within this world, you walk around, your leisure your avatar does. I guess it's there that gamers and other people, when they're not gaming and shooting each other, they could be buying something from Gucci or buying something for their mom from Gucci. Well, and a lot of this is about the experience of being inside the world. Uh, it's not just playing games as part of it, but it's also we're seeing more meetings in the metaverse. We're seeing more more workplace uh, events in different metaverses. So that's part of it as well. And it also, it, it sort of is connected to the idea of NFTs. So uh, a lot of this, a lot of things that are being sold right now are virtual shoes. So Nike recently bought this company called Artifact, which makes these uh, sort of NFT uh, shoes that are that are wearable within the metaverse and so we're seeing more of that happening and there's experiences you can do so the ralph lauren experience for example it's a uh, a ski adventure so you can sort of have this like winter wonderland adventure within the metaverse and it's all very early days on all of this but what companies are trying to do is they're trying to get ahead of this by buying the land and the interesting thing to keep in mind on the metaverses is, is that like real land there is a scarcity factor involved there isn't sort of an endless amount of land available within the different metaverses Deidre, can i buy a reit that is composed of metaverse holdings not yet uh okay. but uh I believe it was ProShares recently announced a metaverse ETF. Now, I suspect that that metaverse ETF is probably going to be things related to the metaverse, um, different stocks, Roblox, for example, probably also meta. But eventually, I believe there will probably be uh, metaverse uh, REITs. I mean, wh why not? <laughs> yeah, why not? There's a Bitcoin, well, it's not a spot ETF, but there's a Bitcoin ETF uh, based on futures. That's a whole nother issue. Deidre, this is a, it's been a fascinating conversation today. Really appreciate you coming on so early in the new year, but you know, real estate's top of mind for so many people. And now the metaverse real estate is top of mind. Great to see you. Thanks so much. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Thank you so much. That wraps up this episode of BRN AM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, then drop us a line. And don't forget, for all the information in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more, check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives or check out our latest content? Then check out our streaming partners, Roku, Amazon, Samsung, and over a hundred more. We're back again tomorrow. Until then, I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe, keep on saving, and don't forget, 
roll with the change. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device. Are you being audited? And do you owe the IRS $10,000 or more in back taxes? Is the IRS threatening to take more of your money? Don't fight the IRS alone. The Tax Doctor is here to help you negotiate your tax bill and reduce your stress. The IRS can freeze your assets and seize your bank accounts, but you can stop these IRS actions. The Tax Doctor will work with you using our years of experience to represent your case to help you get the best resolution under the IRS guidelines. Help is here to deal with the IRS to reduce your stress. We've handled thousands of cases, so we know what we're doing. If you owe $10,000 or more in back taxes, do not call the IRS alone. Call a tax doctor now for a tax emergency analysis. Call 800-224-6439.